Hey there guys and gals, have you ever imagined yourself as an ordinary high school student caught up in a whimsical world of creating a game with a group of captivating, yet eccentric girls? And if that hasn't piqued your interest, picture this. Each of these girls possesses a unique set of quirks and an insatiable appetite for romance. Welcome to the enchanting world of Sakano, how to raise a boring girlfriend. Our story begins with Tomoe Aki, our protagonist, riding his bike down a hill, chasing a cap that was carried away by the wind. When he catches up to it, he looks up and becomes mesmerized by the cap's owner. Time passes, and we see Tomoya wake him up early in his otaku room. He even has a poster of Oremo, a popular harem anime. Apparently, he has multiple jobs, and even his neighbor knows he's an otaku. Then we are introduced to Ariri Spencer Sawamura, his childhood friend, and Yutaha Kasuigoka, a book lover who doesn't seem to get along with Ariri. In the classroom, one of Tomoya's classmates is secretly admiring Ariri from a distance, and he criticizes him for liking real-life girls or 3D girls, when he prefers 2D girls like a true otaku. Later, Hariri takes advantage of being alone to retrieve an Eroge game that Tomoe had gotten for her in exchange for a favor. She feels uncomfortable because she doesn't want to be seen with him, but he asks her to talk before the ceremony. Hariri agrees and he proposes making a game, referencing the scene with the cat girl that had inspired him. However, Hariri doesn't want to be involved in his fantasies. He tries to convince her, claiming he's the best at drawing and secretly an otaku, who creates adult drawings making her blush. He reminds her of their childhood promise, but Hariri tells him to do it alone. Still, Tomoya insists on her help to capture the cuteness of the girl he saw, even though she treats him with disgust, accusing him of not being at the level of a producer and wanting to create a simple story. Nonetheless, he asks her to take a look later. During the ceremony, Tomoya talks about his otaku interests. When Yutaha's turn comes, they admire her as the best despite her sleeping and not doing assignments. Tomoya's friend admires her the most while he is only interested in 2D girls. Now on the rooftop, Tomoya finds Yutaha reading and sits next to her, offering her some food. He tries to recruit her for his game, but she dismisses and belittles him. Tomoya tries to speak nicely to persuade her, reminding her that she encouraged him and that she's the best at writing novels. He leaves asking her to see him after class. After classes end, Tomoya has finished his story for the game and goes to meet the girls. As he's leaving, a girl asks him to do some tasks the teacher assigned and thanks him for returning her cap. He, who is a bit absent-minded, doesn't pay much attention until he remembers. It's the girl from his epiphany. Ariri arrives in Sundir mode to talk to him but finds only Yutaha leading them to argue. Meanwhile, as Tomoe remembers the cap incident, he rushes to talk to the beautiful girl, who turns out to be his classmate, but he hadn't recognized her. Wow, this guy is clueless. Tomoe meets the cap girl, whose name is Megumi Katu at a cafe and only then realizes that she looks attractive enough to simp for, but strangely enough, she is not remarkable to stand out. He is surprised that Megumi recognized him despite being a low-tier otaku, but she reveals that for everyone else he is one of the top three school celebrities because he has managed to introduce light novels into the library and screen and on during festivals. However, she feels like a total opposite. She doesn't stand out and is just another plain girl among the masses. This angers him and he becomes intense, asking her to have a better personality to become the heroine of his game. Megumi thinks he's confessing his feelings to her, but he only wants her as the heroine of his game. She asks if he's dating the two most attractive girls in school, but he denies it because he's only interested in 2D girls. It's only then that he realizes that the two main waifers were watching him from outside. The girls enter and sit at his table, making Megumi feel uncomfortable being in the presence of the three school celebrities. He introduces them as his team for creating the game and includes Megumi as part of the team. After the waifers argue among themselves, they once again reject his story, but he still insists on creating the story and including Megumi. It takes Megumi to the place where he rescued her cat, but she doesn't seem to attach much importance to the location. Then he takes her to his house, and she accepts without hesitation, which annoys him, who lectures her for accepting so easily. Once in his room, he wants Megumi to behave like the girls in games and makes her play them. However, she responds with normal answers in the game, which angers him. Nevertheless, she follows his instructions until they reach the end of the game, with him crying with excitement. In his otaku mode, he gives Megumi instructions on how to be the waifu of the game and realizes where he went wrong, leading to the girls rejecting him. Megumi is about to leave, but he stops her to play the sequel to the game they had finished, asking her to turn him into a man. Megumi agrees since they are just playing, and they continue playing until the next morning. Chapter 3 In the latest episode, Tomoya finds himself immersed in game development as he engages in a conversation with Megumi. While the protagonist realizes he has some free time during the holidays, he must also dedicate himself to studying for exams. Unfortunately, Megumi is no longer available to assist him, having departed for Hokkaido. Despite his best efforts to focus, Tomoe's easily distracted nature proves troublesome. Little does he know, Ariri, fully embracing her otaku side, stealthily sneaks into his room to indulge in drawing some spicy illustrations. As fate would have it, she had to escape an important gathering in her own house, seeking solace 
in the protagonist's room. Harari soon discovers that Tomoya has yet to complete the game's story. However, he defends himself by reflecting on their shared nubishness during childhood. If Harari can master the art of drawing, Tomoya believes he can become a pro game director. These words stir up Ariri's sunbeer tendencies, but their moment is interrupted by the arrival of Utaha. Ariri hastily conceals herself, while Tomoya discreetly hides his belongings. Utaha, subtly toying with flirtation, enters the room under the pretense of enjoying pastries together. She offers comfort to Tomoya but soon grows frustrated as she recalls the drawbacks of being a writer. Hoping to secure more time, Tomoya implores Utaha, banking on the power of his work-in-progress story to convince her to assist him. However, Utaha denies his request for an extension. It eagerly anticipates his next move. Before taking her leave, Utaha advises him to prioritize their team's dedication and slyly mentions the need to hide Ariri's bicycle, prompting Ariri's ire as she emerges from her hiding spot, storming off in anger. Determined to alleviate Megumi's concerns regarding the approaching deadline, Tomoya reaches out to her, offering words of motivation. Encouraged by his support, Megumi returns wearing the same clothes and hat as before, ready to become the protagonist of his game. To Tomoya's surprise, she reveals that she convinced Ariri to design costumes and enlisted Yutaha's assistance in voice acting and acting. Though Tomoya doesn't entirely comprehend Megumi's intentions, he recognizes her earnest desire to help him fulfill his dream. Tomoya promises to release Megumi just in time for her to reach school the following day, unknowingly observed by Yutaha and Ariri who grumble about the challenges of collaborating as they watch Megumi walk away with the protagonist. Yutaha engages in a phone conversation concerning her upcoming novel submission and an interview she initially wishes to decline. However, the mysterious person on the other end successfully convinces her, leaving us unaware of their persuasive words. Having enjoyed novels recommended by Tomoya, Megumi receives them as a gift from him. To her surprise, she discovers that Yutaha is the author, which surprises her as Yutaha often dozes off in class and doesn't strike her as a writer. Tomoya can't help but simp over Yutaha, eagerly anticipating her future works. During Yutaha's interview, it is revealed that the interviewer is none other than Tomoya. Her editor arranged the meeting knowing Yutaha's prickly nature with strangers. Despite Yutaha's initial desire to reject the interview, Tomoya pleads with her to proceed. Throughout the interview, Yutaha struggles to stay awake due to an all-nighter spent writing her novel. However, after a few drinks, she awakens and manages to answer questions with minimal enthusiasm. The interviewer discloses that it was Tomoya's blog that propelled Yutaha's works to fame. Eventually, Yutaha grows more serious, expressing gratitude to her readers for their support. She also reveals her decision to join Tomoya's project, leaving him immensely grateful. Back at school, Ariri arrives, embodying her Tsunder persona, only to find Yutaha already present. Learning that Tomoya charmed Yutaha into accepting the interview infuriates Ariri, prompting her to strike him with her pigtails. The protagonist sets a December deadline, aligning with the winter comic hit, leaving the girls with limited time. Amidst their bickering and attempts to adjust the schedule, they find themselves without a concrete deadline. The girls put their differences aside and join him in working, utilizing him as a fetching assistant. Concerned about the budget, they inquire about financing. Yutaha suggests loaning Tomoya money in exchange for a small favor, but her sentence remains unfinished due to Ariri's interruption. To avoid complications, he proposes self-financing the project. Tomoya begins juggling multiple jobs, including one as a waiter, where he coincidentally spots Megumi on a date. The following day, he questions her about it, only to learn that it was her cousin, and their meeting held no romantic interest. Tomoya persists, requesting that she refrain from meeting her cousin, and instead invites her to go shopping together. In the latest episode, Arira approaches Megumi and requests her help with expressions for her drawings. Meanwhile, our otaku protagonist shares a tender moment feeding Yutaha with his own mouth. Witnessing this, Arira becomes consumed by jealousy, leading to a heated confrontation with Megumi over her supposed lack of expressiveness. When Megumi eventually departs, the protagonist engages in a conversation with Arira. Surprisingly, she asks if she can visit his house over the weekend to work on her art, unaware that it coincides with his scheduled date with Megumi. Intrigued by the concept of a date, our dear virgin protagonist seeks guidance, unintentionally revealing his own plans. Ariri, taken aback, offers advice, but an accidental mention of Megumi prompts her to suspect ulterior motives. In the midst of this, Yutaha spirals into a frenzy and concocts a story about a yander girl, leaving the protagonist utterly frightened. The following day, Yutaha presents the story she managed to complete overnight but falls asleep shortly after. The tale revolves around a character resembling Tomoya who unexpectedly encounters a girl and reunites with her on their first day of school, leading to a blossoming romance. 
However, the girl's peculiar behavior suggests she believes the protagonist is her long-lost brother from a past life, and together, they must confront a formidable titan. As they emerge victorious, their sibling love transforms into genuine affection, concluding the story. Delighted by the narrative, Tomoya requests time to review it. Three days later, he faces complaints from the Tsumbir for hindering progress, but Yutaha defends him, acknowledging his role as the project's director. Subsequently, Megumi proposes postponing their date, but the protagonist insists on going ahead with it, unknowingly catching Ariri's eavesdropping ear. On the day of their anticipated outing, the couple encounters an extensive clue at the mall, which has just opened. Ironically, the protagonist grumbles about other couples despite being part of one himself. He finds their disorganization rather irksome compared to the meticulous planning evident at Japan's grandest otaku event, Kamiket. Utilizing his otaku expertise, the protagonist strategizes to ensure Megumi can explore her favorite stores efficiently. Throughout their journey, he occasionally holds Megumi's hand to navigate the bustling crowd. Eventually, they arrive at the last store she wishes to visit, where Megumi presents the protagonist with a pair of glasses as a token of gratitude. A vivid memory transports the protagonist back to the time when he first encountered Yutaha's captivating novel, igniting a passionate admiration for her storytelling. Returning to the present, Tomoe strives to meet with Yutaha, who fiends disinterest. In a more recent memory, he inquires about her next novel, only to find Yutaha drifting off to sleep due to her late-night writing session. Yutaha implores the protagonist to share his desired continuation before succumbing to slumber once more. Back in the present, Tomoya fails to rendezvous with Yutaha, who is engaged in a discussion with her editor, attempting to convince her of her nonchalance towards him. As Ray begins to fall, Yutaha's editor departs in search of an umbrella. Another memory resurfaces, featuring Yutaha seeking the protagonist's input on her novel before publishing it. However, he declines to read it, as he wishes Yutaha's emotions, not his own, to permeate the pages. Lost in thought, the protagonist contemplates how he can earn Yutaha's forgiveness, recollecting the time she asked him to wait for the next volume, which led to six months of silence between them, and reminding himself of his stay in a hotel during that period. Stranded without train service at that late hour, the protagonist arrives at the hotel where Yutaha and her editor are staying, drenched from the rain. Kindly, they permit him to use their shower to dry off. Suddenly, the editor reveals she managed to secure a double room by rearranging their accommodations. While Yutaha showers, it dawns on the protagonist that he will spend the night in the same room as her. When Yutaha emerges from the bathroom, the protagonist enumerates reasons why they should not be together, but she clings to him persistently. In that instant, the protagonist gathers his courage and implores her to make him a man, albeit choosing his words poorly, unintentionally requesting her assistance as a creator instead. Yutaha, disappointed by the misunderstanding, expresses her desire for the other meaning. She reprimands him with a series of kicks before engaging in a discussion about the game's storyline. The protagonist proceeds to enlighten her about his research with Megumi, which Yutaha mistakenly interprets as a romantic outing. Tomoe endeavors to make her comprehend that despite the captivating narrative she crafted, it fails to capture the essence of being in a relationship with someone like Megumi. Yutaha contemplates discarding everything she wrote, believing it to be inadequate. Unaware that the protagonist actually enjoyed her work, they then begin rewriting the story, with the protagonist offering more detailed instructions. Their collaborative effort extends into the early hours of the morning, culminating in an intense and captivating scene that rekindles Yutaha's obsession with her yander tail. Shortly after, Yutaha rouses the protagonist from his sleep, denying him the chance to rest after their arduous night of writing. She expresses gratitude for the happiness he brought her, acknowledging his role as a creator. As she departs from the room, Yutaha sends him a compromising photo of them together in bed. Returning to the moment when the protagonist bids farewell to Megumi at the mall, Ariri intercepts her to remind her of Tomoe's apparent abandonment in favor of another woman. Her ploy succeeds as Megumi's expression turns to annoyance, providing Ariri with the opportunity to capture it on paper. Ariri extends an invitation to Tomoya, summoning him to her opulent room in the mansion, seeking aid in tackling her mounting backlog of drawings for the comic hit, which had suffered due to his unintentional intrusion on her project. With no other choice, Tomoya reluctantly accepts. Within the confines of her room, Ariri requests that he recite Koei phrases, reminiscent of those found in Anime, to serve as inspiration for her illustrations. Tomoya obliges, weaving the phrases until they reach a moment of questionable nature where he finds himself unable to proceed. Nonetheless, through their combined efforts, they manage to assist Ariri in completing her Eki drawings. After school, the protagonist reprimands Megumi for her hairstyle change, unaware of Ariri eavesdropping on their conversation while engaged in discussion with her friends nearby. Tomoya continues his critique of Megumi, prompting her to retaliate by alluding to his affection for his Sundir waifu and the waifu writer. As Tomoya attempts to explain his Otaku perspective, a spirited redhead lowly interrupts, embracing him and startling his beloved waifus. The group gathers in a nearby park, where Ariri recalls the lowly's name as Izumi, mentioning that she had studied with Tomoya but was two years his junior. 
Yutaha discreetly observes Izumi, commenting on her greater bust size compared to Uriri's. The low engages him in conversation, expressing her gratitude for his introduction to the joys of womanhood. Due to Izumi's age, Megumi assumes this encounter must have occurred during her elementary school days. Just as Tomoya is about to explain, the low presents him with a ticket, inviting him to attend her upcoming doujinshi presentation. It is revealed that our otaku had introduced her to the world of otaku and gifted her a gaming console. The low behavior sparks Megumi's imagination, pondering the prospect of having a younger sister from a game, while Yutaha develops a negative opinion of Tomoya. The low bids them farewell, inviting our guy to visit her home, where her brother eagerly awaits his presence. The protagonist and the Sundir walk home together, with Tomoya assuming she is upset due to his prolonged interaction with the low. However, Ariri confronts him regarding the console he gave to Izumi. At that moment, someone appears before them, extending a friendly greeting. Ignoring the newcomer, he and the Tsundir continue their argument regarding the game he bestowed upon the low. Tomoya reveals the newcomer's name as Iori, his former otaku comrade with whom he severed ties due to Iori's exploitative tactics of forging connections with creators to accelerate his otaku growth. However, Anori unveils that his methods did indeed bear fruit as he now holds a representative position and seeks to recruit Ariri into his group. He is also well aware of Tomoya's game project, perceiving him as a formidable competitor. In a nostalgic memory, Eriri presents Tomoya with a game from their childhood, revealing her own artistic beginnings and the envy it sparked among their peers. Returning to the present, Eriri languishes in her room played by boredom in the heat. Later on, Yumi pays a visit to Tomoya's room and discovers him assisting Eriri with her comic drawings. It becomes evident that Eriri is falling behind schedule with the prince but remains tight-lipped about the reasons despite Tomoya's aid in meeting the deadline. Despite Ariri's warning about the comic hit being the epitome of taco culture, Megumi displays genuine interest. Subsequently, as they continue their collaborative work, Megumi immerses herself in a game within the confines of Tomoya's room. Ariri becomes captivated, her attention drawn to the gameplay and even sheds tears when she reaches a poignant moment featuring her beloved character. They later resume their work with renewed focus. The attack ponders the possibility of Ariri pursuing a professional artistic career, reminiscing about Yori's proposal. However, at that very moment, Ariri completes her drawing and eagerly indulges in playing the game, driven by her fervent desire. Taking a momentary pause, she asserts her determination to work on her own project and reject anything associated with Ayori due to a lack of trust. Though harboring a slight distrust towards Megumi, particularly regarding her nonchalant cooking in Tomoya's house. Following this, Tomoya accompanies Megumi to the comic it, entering his creators a perspective that leads him to regard the other attendees with disdain. Amidst the bustling event, they encounter Izumi, who boldly presses her chest against Tomoya, mistakenly assuming Megumi to be his girlfriend. While Izumi engages Megumi in conversation, Tomoya immerses himself in reading a doujinshi, captivated by its satisfying ending. Seizing an opportunity, he requests someone to create an impromptu sign designed to attract numerous otaku, including Ariri, who remains hidden in disguise. They succeed in selling all their merchandise. As the day draws to a close, Tomoya recognizes Ariri, assuming she ventured alone due to her fondness for such stories. Ariri confronts him, seeking an explanation as to why he supported Izumi so fervently, while seemingly neglecting her. Overwhelmed with emotion, she breaks down in tears upon Tomoya's assertion that she's highly popular and doesn't require his assistance. Distraught, she flees, inadvertently leaving her hat behind. In a distant memory, Tomoya had once upset Ariri during their childhood, yet the reason remains shrouded in mystery. Shifting to his room, he awakens to find Yutaha beside him, an intimate moment on the brink. However, their exchange is interrupted by Megumi's arrival, prompting him to seek her aid. It turns out Megumi had summoned Yutaha to assist with Tomoya's troubles concerning Ariri, leading to a heartfelt discussion about their complex relationship. Yutaha skillfully attempts to coax Tomoya into speaking up by painting him as a hesitant soul. Feeling less burdened, he opens up, recounting the truth about his past with Ariri and the controversial Lol incident, although Yutaha embellishes the tale. She blames him for praising another person's work in front of Ariri, who perceives it as a blow to her pride as both a creator and childhood friend. Torn by this predicament, Yutaha suggests a game-like solution. He must conquer Ariri, much like one would in a dating simulation, to mend their bond. As Ariri teeters on the edge of tears, Yutaha becomes intoxicated by Tomoya's room scent, and he prepares to attend comic it where Ariri's works are showcased. On his way, he encounters Iori, whom he implores to aid him in winning Ariri back just as she prepares for her father's evening party. Amidst the vibrant fireworks at the party, Ariri reminisces about her childhood moments with Tomoya. In a serendipitous turn of events, he appears before her, just like in her beloved game scene, inviting her to depart with him, recreating a fragment of that cherished moment with Yutaha and Megumi's assistance. 
Arataku successfully convinces Ariri to return to their old school and rejoin their group, but she rebuffs his advances. Just as she walks away, it seems like Tomoya might confess his feelings, yet instead, he reminds her of how she abandoned him when others believed they were an Otaka couple. Consequently, he still harbors resentment, demanding an apology from her. However, Ariri insists that he apologize for favoring someone else's works over hers, despite their long history together. As Tomoya refuses to apologize, he boldly asserts that he prefers the his creations because Ariri lacks a certain elusive quality she can't seem to achieve. Ariri ponders her own otaku side, the facade she presents to the world, and declares she won't apologize until she becomes number one. Amidst their continued arguments, he carries her, and despite their differences, Ariri embraces him. Ariri completes the game's cover art with a provocative illustration of Megumi, allowing Tomoya to christen the project with a name referencing her, much to Ariri's chagrin. In another scene, Ariri presents the low the sign drawn, concealing an additional artwork on the back, signifying her determination not to be outdone. During a virtual meeting, Tomoya requests an eki scene for the game. Yutaha initially opposes it, as it deviates from her usual style of writing, yet Eri supports Tomoya's request, given the dating game genre, leading to a clash between them. Eventually, Yutaha agrees to review the scene. After the meeting, Tomoya stumbles upon his cousin in the bathroom, unclothed though she appears unperturbed. He finds himself uncomfortable witnessing her attire and the absence of the expected reaction from her. Returning to his room, his cousin adorns herself provocatively, striking suggestive poses while revealing her intention to stay with him temporarily due to a dispute with her father, all sanctioned by Tomoya's parents. Tomoya objects concerned about her attire and the prospect of being alone together. Taking advantage of the situation, his cousin playfully teases him, threatening to consume him. In another scene at school, Tomoya's restless night and his cousin's challenging poses cause him to doze off beside Megumi, prompting Yutaha to seize the opportunity and join him. However, he rejects her advances, not wanting to disrupt their unfinished work. Yutaha's proximity becomes too much for Ariri, who locks her in a classroom overlooking the schoolyard. They proceed to plan a scene and discuss game programming. Ariri offers her assistance, but Yutaha tries to dissuade her, deeming it an excessive display of affection. Meanwhile, they contemplate the game's music but struggle to generate any ideas. At that moment, he receives a message from his cousin inquiring about his arrival time inadvertently read by Megumi, provoking intense jealousy within Ariri. Yutaha interrogates Tomoya, leading him to disclose their shared birth date and hospital, allowing Yutaha to glean insights about their shared past while undermining Ariri's status as a childhood friend. Upon returning to his room, Tomoya discovers his cousin sleeping in his bed, having brought her belongings and discarded some of his possessions. As he retrieves his belongings, his cousin playfully assumes a married couple dynamic and attempts to dissuade him from being an otaku by offering to introduce him to girls from her school and inviting him to group dates. He rejects her propositions as he is determined to pursue his otaku dreams and endeavor his cousin deems futile, lecturing him in a motherly fashion. Tomoya heads for a shower and his cousin starts playing the guitar using the amplifier. Alarmed by the noise, Tomoya rushes out of the shower, clad only in a towel to intervene. However, as he listens to the melody attentively, memories of the moments that inspired the game's creation flood his mind. Move, he implores his cousin to assist him with the game, coinciding with the towel's untimely descent, leaving his cousin staring at his wiener. In the penultimate episode, Tomoya introduces Mikuru to the girls in the group as the music manager. However, Mikuru surprises him by grabbing him by the collar, suffocating him with her cleavage. She hadn't accepted the role yet, and her actions frustrate Ariri, who feels powerless against the new girl that Tomoya has known since childhood. Tomoya insists to his cousin that she should handle the music for the game, but she rejects the idea. Yutaha, having been in a similar situation before, is not convinced about including someone who doesn't want to be involved. Yutaha feels attacked when the cousin mentions not wanting to do otaku things, thinking that she is despising or insulting them. However, the cousin explains that it's because she can't keep up with otaku culture and doesn't see Tomoya as one. She then shares a childhood story of when she got lost and he rescued and carried her when they were children. Later, when the other girls have left, Tomoya finds himself alone with Michiru, who is freshly bathed. He expresses his desire for her to join the project, but she misunderstands and thinks he wants to have his first time with her. After clarifying the misunderstanding, the cousin explains that she also has her own dream and group, so she can't help him unless he finds a dedicated manager. Tomoya offers to help her and the cousin accepts, but she asks him to quit his game so he can fully support her. Tomoya refuses, but the cousin insists that the other girls don't take him seriously and only participate because of his influence. In contrast, her group takes their music very seriously. Returning to school, Tomoya meets his long-lost friend, whom he hasn't seen in 10 episodes. He learns that his friend believes he's dating Megumi. When he returns to his room, Tomoya questions his doubts and tries to immerse himself in the game again. Meanwhile, in Ariri's room, Megumi is making progress with the game programming and Ariri is working on the illustrations, while Yutaha is contributing to the story. It's clear that they are all taking the project seriously. 
The next morning, he calls Megumi to ask if they are genuinely committed to the game or if they feel pressured. Megumi agrees to meet him at a restaurant to show him the progress they've made and to prove their dedication. She reveals a part of the game's story where she included subliminal messages expressing her frustration towards Tomoya for being with his cousin when he had asked her to stop seeing her cousin. Upon returning home, Tomoya surprises his cousin by arranging for her group to perform a concert, earning her gratitude. However, when he leaves the room, it becomes evident that she is plotting something. On the day of the concert, Tomoya meets with the other members of his cousin's group to inform them that they will be the opening act. Since no one knows them, it's a good opportunity to gain recognition, and they feel excited. Meanwhile, outside a cafe, Megumi arrives with a slightly angry Yutaha because Tomoya hadn't told her about becoming his cousin's manager. Ariri had been feeling down after being overshadowed as the childhood friend, so she had escaped to the maid cafe they were at now. Somehow, they managed to convince Ariri to join them for the concert. Although Yutaha rubs in the fact that she is no longer Tomoya's childhood friend due to being replaced by his cousin, Megumi tries to reconcile them and build trust in him. However, when they enter the dressing room, they find him with his cousin on top, performing a suggestive act due to being made to wear a maid for a cosplay. Then Tomoya reveals that the group he was with before his cousin joined was one that played anime songs. However, they had deceived her by claiming to be a cutting-edge trend group, which is why she liked the song Tomoya heard as it had an otaku music tone. This angers the cousin. The cousin's friends accept that they had deceived her and apologize, asking her to play anime songs together. The cousin initially wants to refuse because she's not an otaku, but Tomoya convinces her by saying that she already likes those songs and that they can be happy together, sounding like an indecent proposition with her on top of him in a pose. The concert begins with the cousin being a little shy, but she recovers and plays, thrilling the audience. At the end of their concert, they perform an original song from their group that the audience really enjoys and catches the attention of Tomoya's waifus. As they finish playing, she points at Tomoya, saying Ice Tail, the band's name, which sounds like Eishiteru, I love you in Japanese, and she receives kicks from the waifus. After the concert, Tomoya talks alone with his cousin and proposes once again that she works with him on the music for his game. He explains that it will make players cry from the emotions it evokes, combining the talents of all the waifus. The cousin accepts and wanting to formalize the agreement, she seems to want to act very rough, but ends up putting him in a wrestling hold. As they leave, Megumi goes with Ariri, strengthening their friendship and deciding that Megumi will call Ariri by her name instead of her last name, as they are otaku friends. Yutaha finishes writing the story and a part of the game is shown where the game protagonist is in a scene with a destroyed world and reunites with the game's waifu, continuing the storyline of being siblings from a past life. At the end of the season, they manage to complete one route in the game, and although they are happy, they still have to finish the other routes, so they still have a lot of work to do. Season 2, Chapter 0 This introductory episode of the second season begins with all the girls in bikinis discussing an anime, which also serves as a reference to the previous season. Shortly after, they all approach our otaku, but he only wants to passionately talk about Anime. We return to the protagonist's room where we see how the bikini theme came about. Ariri asks Megumi to put on a bikini so she can draw her, but Megumi refuses and suggests that Ariri should just imagine her. Ariri can't agree with that since she needs to see her, which leads to the initial fan service scene. Ariri asks Megumi to strike poses for her drawn, but she refuses when she's told that the poses will be like those in Hentai. This rejection drives Ariri a bit crazy because she's denied the opportunity to see Megumi in those poses. Despite that, Megumi strikes more discreet poses, but with Ariri's perv gaze which tires her out after a while of posing. Tomoya tries to talk to Ariri, but she doesn't want him near her for fear that he might look at her in a lewd way. However, he doesn't see her that way at all because she's flat-chested, which reminds her of a childhood moment when he saw her equally flat and when she was sick. Ariri becomes sentimental because the guy remembers her, and just as she seems about to confess her feelings, his cousin pulls him by the leg into the pool to take advantage of him, reminding him that they used to do that when they were kids. Ariri tries to take advantage of being his childhood friend, but his cousin rubs it in her face that she broke that bond by abandoning him. At that moment, Izumi appears since she had been invited by Megumi, and she jumps towards Tomoya, taking him to the pool. Izumi's presence angers Ariri, and they start arguing over who has a closer friendship with him. After rescuing the nerdy guy from the pool, Yutaha tries to give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, but the waifus stop her, looking at her disdainfully. They bid farewell to the protagonist because he doesn't want to be alone with the waifus, although his cousin continues to flirt with him. The waifus gather to go to their rooms, but when they realize Yutaha is not present and that none of them will be her roommate, they realize she had something planned. Yutaha took the opportunity to have a romantic date with Tomoya, not wanting to let him slip away. She even reveals that she rented a room for them. However, they are interrupted by a call from the girls to Tomoya, who realized Yutaha's ploy, which makes her angry. To make amends, they all go to a karaoke-like place where the cousin teaches them the new song she composed, which inspires Yutaha to improve the script and Ariri to create more illustrations for the game. Later, 
Our dear virgin sneaks away with Megumi to relax and have a conversation. Although he shares a somewhat strange piece of information about a legend that breaks couples. Back with the waifus, Izumi gives Ariri an illustration in response to her gift from the previous season. Ariri and Yutaha engage in a heated debate over introducing more female characters and constructing a flat character modeled after Ariri, as well as a well-defined character representing Yutaha. Observing their argument, Tomoya wonders when their rivalry had escalated to such a level. In a flashback, we witness the first encounter between Yutaha and Ariri. Ariri catches sight of Yutaha meeting with Tomoya to discuss her novel, which irritates the Tsundere girl. Consequently, she criticizes Tomoya, labeling him as an otaku solely interested in the novel he's reading and its author. Yutaha confronts Ariri, revealing herself as the author. Jealousy consumes Ariri as she remembers Tomoya giving her the same novel and the excitement she felt while reading it. When she attempts to request an autograph from the author, she spots Tomoya conversing with Yutaha. During that time, Yutaha probes Ariri to uncover more about her and her relationship with Tomoya. Yutaha's interrogation prompts Tomoya to speak unfavorably of Ariri and divulge their shared past, which incenses Yutaha. Subsequently, Yutaha investigates Ariri, discovering something within her private studio at school. The following morning, Yutaha waits for Ariri at the school entrance, planning to confront her alone and reveal the hentai drawings she stumbled upon. Ariri envisions the encounter playing out like a scene from her own hentai works, but Yutaha's intentions are merely to ascertain why Ariri concealed her identity as the author. Ariri confesses that it was an act of revenge for Tomoya's abandonment, referring to him as the Otaka friend and expresses her belief that Yutaha's novel manipulates readers' emotions. Yutaha's words jog her memory of the excitement she felt regarding Ariri's artwork, leading her to regard Ariri as an equal. However, Ariri remains convinced that Yutaha aims to manipulate Tomoya. Returning to the present, Tomoya attempts to persuade Yutaha and Ariri to sign together, resulting in a quarrel between the two. Eventually, he manages to convince them. Witnessing this, Megumi requests that they create a memento together as a team. Upon hearing Megumi's request, Yutaha and Ariri also ask for cards to create mementos of their own. Yutaha completes writing another route for the game, earning herself a date with Tomoya. They visit a bookstore, where Yutaha becomes engrossed in reading books rather than purchasing them, trailed by Ariri and Megumi. Yutaha remains somewhat absorbed in her reading even while dining with Tomoya. However, he proposes going to watch a movie, while Megumi ponders the reason behind Ariri's presence. Ariri refuses to disclose it and continues to follow them to the cinema. After the movie, Tomoya and Yutaha exchange thoughts on the film's quality, analyzing its content while Ariri sits at a nearby table with Megumi, still emotionally affected by the movie they watched, engaging in a discussion. Meanwhile, Tomoya departs with Yutaha. As the day nears its end, they head to a cafe where Tomoya expresses gratitude to Yutaha for completing the route. Yutaha confesses that she is contemplating her future, torn between attending a distant university or one closer to their current location. While Yutaha weighs the pros and cons, Tomoya starts to exhibit concern. Meanwhile, Mayumi prevents Ariri from eavesdropping by guiding her to a nearby clothing store. Towards the conclusion of their date, Tomoya suggests that Yutaha remain at the nearby university to collaborate on another game. However, he acknowledges her desire to pursue studies farther away. Yutaha hands him a USB containing an alternative story for the game, requesting him to read it and then inform her which university she should choose. Yutaha bids farewell to Tomoya, uttering something he fails to catch. At the agreed-upon time, Iriri and Megumi arrive at Tomoya's house, but receive no response. Worried that he may have spent the night with Yutaha, Iriri searches for a key to enter the house, unaware that Megumi already possesses one. Upon entering Tomoya's room, they find him in tears while reading the route written by Yutaha. The alternative story depicts an intense in relationship between siblings, with an ending where the game's protagonist must choose between saving his sister or saving the world. The sister sacrifices herself to save her brother, concluding the story and moving Tomoya to tears. Tomoya adores the route so much that he desires to incorporate it into the game, although he realizes it would require significant effort to do so. Despite her excitement for the story, Ariri declines to make further modifications. However, she ultimately leaves the decision to Tomoya and inadvertently reveals that she had witnessed his date with Yutaha. Ariri attempts to enlist Megumi's help, but Megumi is engrossed in playing a game seemingly developed by Iori's group, which shares a similar theme with Tomoya's game. In the latest episode, Tomoya, along with Ariri and Megumi, meets up with Iori, who unveils his secret weapon, his sister, Izumi. However, their conversation is interrupted when Megumi engages with a new girl, causing her to revert to a more childish demeanor. After everyone settles down, Adora reveals that he has copied the plot of their story, which greatly upsets Tomoya. The fact that Iori's group has more resources and support also adds to Tomoya's frustration. Suddenly, Izumi announces that she asked her brother to create the same game, wanting to compete with Ariri on equal grounds. 
This declaration ignites a fierce rivalry between Ariri and Izumi as they both strive to be the best illustrator for the game. While Tomoya remains confident in his victory with Yutaha on his side, Ayori's self-assuredness begins to shake his resolve. At school, Tomoya confides in Megumi about his worries regarding Ayori's intentions. However, Megumi abruptly leaves while he is speaking, leaving him to ponder on his own. As the school day nears its end, Megumi reveals to Yutaha that Tomoya is still indecisive after reading the latest changes she made, causing Yutaha to feel uneasy. Back at home, Megumi re-raids the alternative story, trying to decipher what she wanted to convey to Arotaku. He too struggles to comprehend the alternative route, but he believes that playing in himself might provide clarity and help him make a decision. Upon hearing this, Megumi decides to incorporate that choice into the game. The next morning, Megumi feels disheartened that she couldn't include the alternative route and realizes that they won't be able to finish the game in two days, even with Tomoya's assistance. Frustrated, she decides to take a break. Meanwhile, our main guy's cousin teases him, mistakenly assuming they spent the night engaging in other activities. When Megumi wakes up, she confides in her cousin about the situation, finding some solace. However, Tomoya comes up with a plan to involve his cousin's band members, who are fellow attackers and possess some computer knowledge except his cousin. He resorts to blackmail, threatening to stop being their manager if they refuse to help him. Tomoya manages to secure Ariri's assistance with some computers, but it becomes apparent that she is struggling with the illustrations. After tirelessly working in Tomoya's room, the girls become exhausted but succeed in incorporating the alternative story into the game. When Tomoya tries the game himself, he realizes something is amiss and arranges a private meeting with Yutaha to express his dissatisfaction, deeming the current state of the game as garbage. It begins with Megumi's quest to find Tomoya and explain that she now understands Yutaha's intentions behind the new route. However, when she searches for him on the rooftop, she stumbles upon him being disciplined by Yutaha and decides not to interrupt them. In a classroom turned into a maid cafe, Tomoya encounters Yutaha. He demonstrates to her that her writing doesn't work well for a dating game resulting in Yutaha's anger and causing a stir among the maids. Tomoya's moodiness due to the game not meeting his expectations reminds Yutaha of the day he rejected reading her novel before publication, leading her to tears. Later, they both calm down and Tomoya tries to uplift Yutaha by taking responsibility as the director and offering to make the necessary changes himself if Yutaha prefers not to do them. Subsequently, through a conversation between Ariri and Megumi, it is revealed that Tomoya takes Yutaha to his room and spends the entire night implementing the changes, with Yutaha by his side. In the middle of the night, Yutaha wakes up to the sound of printing changes. As she approaches Tomoya and finds him asleep, she covers him with a blanket. The next morning, Tomoya startles from oversleeping but realizes that Yutaha continued working on his changes throughout the night. She also tries to encourage him to keep working on the game. They both review the game and Tomoya offers Yutaha tips on dating games. Yutaha notices that it won't take her much time to make the corrections. However, she finds it peculiar that the game features two distinct paths, one bringing happiness to the past waifu and the other to the present waifu, and Tomoya wants to add a third path where both waifus are content. Yutaha becomes convinced to create the three routes, but as she doesn't fully grasp Tomoya's ideas, she requests him to make the changes as the director took her script. She remarks that the changes they made reflect a significant part of him within her writing. Surprisingly, Tomoya manages to write a substantial amount in a short time, though Yutaha criticizes his narrative for lacking professionalism. Nevertheless, she tries to boost his spirits, promising to support him always and help him become a skilled writer. While taking a bath, Yutaha becomes a bit melancholic, recalling Tomoya's rejection. However, her mood brightens upon seeing him passionately working in his room. In a provocative moment, Yutaha, wearing only an unbuttoned blouse, approaches him, but his intense focus causes him to be oblivious to her presence. She goes to sleep, but not before, unintentionally revealing her breath while she dozes off. Later, Yutaha asks Tomoya which waifu he prefers more, unaware that she based the waifus on herself and Ariri. Tomoya responds that he likes both, oblivious to Megumi's attempt to approach him, creating a scene reminiscent of a dating game. Yutaha and Ariri watch from a distance, drawing attention to themselves. In this episode, Yutaha and Ariri witness a fellow student confessing his feelings to Megumi. Suspecting that Tomoya falls into the category of those who realize their affection only when someone else confesses to their waifu, Yutaha decides to punish him with a series of kicks. However, it turns out that Megumi actually rejected the guy, leaving him feeling downcast. This rejection serves as inspiration for Ariri. Later, in the classroom, Tomoya, Yutaha, and Ariri discuss the confession in front of Megumi while Ariri sketches her. Yutaha can't understand why Megumi rejected the guide, but Megumi explains that she has been dedicating her free time to completing the game for the upcoming Winter Comic Hit, as they are slightly behind schedule. Yutaha tries to blame Ariri for the delay in the illustrations, but Ariri places the blame on him for adding more changes to the three routes, a fact he readily accepts. Arotaku must then defend Ariri from Yutaha's criticism and convinces her to commit to delivering the illustrations on time. 
To ensure this, Ariri retreats to a secluded mansion outside the city where she can work without distractions, promising to meet the deadline and keeping in mind their rivalry with the low. On Monday, Tomoya meets with Yutaha and Megumi. Yutaha stokes his anxiety by pointing out that Ariri is avoiding them and warns of possible setbacks. When he returns home, Megumi suggests visiting Ariri to ensure she is on track, but he declines the offer, citing the need to work on the game alone. Megumi leaves her schedule open in case he changes his mind and also expresses curiosity about the different girls he has in his room every weekend. Back in his room during a video call with Ariri, Tomoya receives only one illustration and Ariri admits that progress is slower due to the other route appearing as if it was created by a different author. The Virgin accepts this without complaint. On Tuesday, he meets with Yutaha, who once again fuels his anxiety by mentioning that Ariri is following the expected pattern and may not deliver on time. Yutaha becomes hostile towards Tomoya when she realizes that he doesn't fully believe in Ariri's abilities and doesn't see her as a professional capable of growth. Later in the evening during a video call with Ariri, she confesses that she hasn't made any progress with the drawings and blames herself for the lack of improvement. However, she promises that she will meet the deadline, making him realize that she is indeed following the predicted pattern. On Thursday, Tomoya has a nightmare where Ariri fails to deliver on time. On Friday, he mentions to Megumi his concerns about Ariri no longer contacting him and feeling worried about her well-being due to the bad weather and poor diet at the mansion. Meanwhile, Ariri is frustrated and desperately trying to come up with ideas for the illustrations on her balcony. On Saturday, Ariri informs Tomoya that she has found inspiration and will be able to deliver on time, and she has yet to start making all the drawings. He finds this impossible, but Ariri asks him to have faith in her ability to envision the characters based on the atmosphere she has in mind. Disheartened, he tells her to do as she pleases. Ariri wakes up in her room on a Monday, realizing that she has lost track of time due to her intense focus. She accidentally steps on Tomoya's face without realizing he is in her room. Arataku had borrowed money from Aori who arranges for one of his associates to drive him to Ariri's mansion. During the drive, he is questioned about his remarkable progress, which confuses Iori as achieving such progress would usually involve hiring and firing many people. Upon arriving at the mansion, they find the drawings completed, but Ariri has fainted on the floor. They rush her to see a doctor, while Iori's associate smiles maliciously. Upon their return, Iori assists Tomoya in creating a master copy of the game in time emphasizing the need for support among those in the same industry. In the present, Ariri is feeling better, but still a little ill. Tomoya consoles her by expressing his appreciation for her drawings. However, he reveals that they won't be able to deliver the game for the comic it due to his inability to make progress while taking care of Ariri. This disappoints Ariri, but Tomoya tries to uplift her spirits by praising her drawings more than the lowly works. They then reminisce about their childhood and the anime they used to watch in games they played together, which helps Ariri feel more calm and content. Realizing her own fault in being too much of a perfectionist, Ariri apologizes. Despite being in a poor location and on the last day of the comic it, they manage to showcase the finished game at their booth. They feel joyous knowing that everyone put in their efforts. Later, our dear virgin and Ariri visit Yori's booth to express their gratitude for his help. Ariri speaks with Izumi accepting her defeat but vowing to continue striving to surpass her, while Tomoya engages in a conversation with Iori. To his surprise, he discovers that the demo of their game has become a trend. Upon returning to their booth, he realizes there is a high demand for their game, and it sells out within 30 minutes. As they head home, Tomoya asks Megumi to celebrate together, but she rejects him and acts coldly. Confused, he persists, and Megumi confesses that she is upset because he didn't seek her help or inform her about Ariri's situation or the deadline for the game. She feels unimportant to him. After a period of successful sales, Tomoya reveals to Ariri that their game's popularity hinges largely on her artwork and Utah's narrative. He requests a unique illustration from her to garner more interest. Working diligently, Ariri is struck by a sudden realization upon completion. Subsequently, Tomoya and Utaha engage in a conversation regarding fair compensation for her contributions. Despite the game's high sales, Utaha expresses indifference about payment, even suggesting he behave like a classic scumbag producer and hoard all the earnings to earn the team's resentment. This prompts him to ponder over Utaha's past with her former producer. On their way to school, Utaha becomes affectionately forward with Tomoya, causing Ariri to rush to the scene, scolding him for not waiting for her. The ensuing spat between the two girls sparks school-wide rumors of him living out a harem in a fantasy. Soon after, Megumi appears, our guy attempts to engage her, but she remains distant, nursing her hurt feelings. Later, Tomoya encounters Iori, who delivers Valentine's chocolates on behalf of his sister, the lowly, preoccupied with studying for exams. Yorta commends the game, attributing his charm to Ariri and Utah's work. The happy ending in the third route he reveals was unmistakably Tomoe's brainchild, 
reminiscent of a doujinshi he made as a child. Parting on the note of encouraging him to persevere with his project, Aori vouches for the importance of keeping Ariri and Yutaha on board. Arotaku struggles with the idea of launching a second project, with Ariri and Yutaha's support uncertain. When he seeks advice from Megumi, she remains aloof. As Valentine's Day unfolds, he receives chocolates from a seemingly tsundere Ariri, catching him off guard. Tomoe reveals that he and Megumi are still at odds. Ariri attempts to shoulder the blame, but Tomoe shields her from it. He tries to rally her for the upcoming project, but she requests time to recover from her guilt over missing the delivery deadline. In a later encounter with Yutaha, he praises her latest novel and looks forward to her autograph session. She flirtatiously offers to sign his entire body. After presenting him with her Valentine's gift, Yutaha shares plans for her novel's continuation and her intention to leave school to focus on university. When Tomoe broaches the subject of their next project, she seems more concerned with roping in Ariri, worried about her prolonged inactivity post-game completion. After school, Tomoe spots a solitary Megumi in a cafe and sends her an invitation to plan their next venture. Back in his room, he replays their game, becoming emotional over Megumi's meticulous input and dedication, which renews his commitment to the next project and to Megumi. Post-classes, Megumi attempts to slip away but is intercepted by Tomoe, who insists on their meeting. He escorts her to the audiovisual room, where, under the pretense of cornering her, he unveils a presentation about his new game proposal, starring a character modeled after Megumi. His earnest wish to collaborate with her again, along with his acknowledgement of past directorial errors, inspires Megumi. She questions whether Eriri would accept her character's protagonism in the new game. Tomoya probes if their reconciliation has affected her feelings towards him. She denies this, reminding him of the awkward tasks he made her undertake for the game. The dear virgin Tomoya finally grasps he isn't in a dating sim, where he can effortlessly win over the girl's affection. He expresses his gratitude and apologies to Megumi for falling short as a friend. The discovery of Megumi's love for their past project moves him, and in response, she tearfully accepts his invitation to work together again. On their homeward journey, Megumi inquires about the other girls and the dynamics of their future teamwork. Tomoya, engrossed in discussing his new game idea, overlooks the domestic scene of Megumi cooking as though they were a couple. He animatedly shares game details while she gently admonishes him for certain overlooked aspects. Before they retire for the night, almost together, she hands him her Valentine's Day chocolate. Tomoya bumps into Yutaha post-graduation, who initially surmises that he desires a memorable one-night stand before they go their separate ways. Denying this assumption, he takes her to a cafe with the intention of recruiting her again for his team, with his aspiration of reassembling the original crew for his upcoming project. Presenting the story he has devised, Yutaha finds herself enjoying it despite its resemblance to a commonplace dating sim plot. Tomoya proceeds to invite her to his team, but Yutaha queries about Ariri. As he hasn't approached Ariri yet, Tomoya simply requests Yutaha's support, even if minimal. However, she feels slighted, doubting his capabilities as a producer for not setting work expectations and deadlines. Yutaha reveals she's been approached by a large corporation to design a popular game and mentions the same company's interest in recruiting Ariri. She expresses genuine interest in collaborating with Ariri again. In a flashback, Yutaha tries to discuss with Ariri, who is upset over a misunderstanding with Tomoya, about a delayed illustration intended for the game buyers. Ariri blames her delay on a feigned cold, but it's evident she's struggling to replicate the quality of her previous artwork for the dating sim game. Concurrently, Yutaha is offered an opportunity by her editor to script a renowned game for a leading company, Mars. The invitation was prompted by a manga artist from Iori's group who was so impressed with Tomoe's creation that she wishes to bring on board both the illustrator, Ariri, and the novelist, Yutaha. Both win and meet with Mars executives, though Ariri aims to dissuade Yutaha from abandoning Tomoe's project. However, they encounter just Akane, a famous manga artist who bluntly lays out her project proposal. Akane's impressive offer stuns both Yutaha and Ariri. She makes it clear that their total commitment to the project is non-negotiable, and that both must be on board for the deal to proceed. Ariri attempts to decline, feeling inadequate compared to the presented game, but Akane berates her, indicating Ariri is far from reaching her artistic potential. Ariri and Yutaha reflect on Akane's proposal. Ariri displays negativity and reluctance, particularly about leaving Tomoe behind. However, Yutaha observes that Ariri hasn't outright rejected the proposal and is solely dwelling on the negative aspects. Both start contemplating the benefits, though Yutaha feels slighted by the condition that her acceptance is dependent on Ariri's involvement. She believes they are not respecting Ariri's professional skills, leaving the final call to her. In the meantime, Dori reprimands Akane for not consulting with Tomoya before contacting the girls, although she admits that Akane's audacity mirrors her own. Deciding to change tactics, Dori opts for a more affable producer role that values team collaboration. Regardless, she plans to continue collaborating with demanding individuals like Akane. 
Later, Utah had discloses to her editor her intention to accept a Kane's proposal, but also her desire to continue working on Tomoya's project and her novels, despite uncertainty about managing all three tasks. The editor, a former colleague of Akane, advises Utah to prepare for the challenging work style of Akane, which she likens to a monster. Utah isn't concerned about herself but fears Akane's impact on Ariri. During a nap, Ariri wakes Utah to showcase a flurry of sketches she's produced at home, demonstrating her restored artistic inspiration. Utah acknowledges Ariri's professionalism and understands that her growth as an artist is hindered by her emotional attachment to Tomoya. Facing the daunting task of rejecting Tomoya for a second time, Ariri's resolve falters. With her renewed self-belief and acknowledgement of Utaha's professionalism, they form a stronger bond united in their resolve against Akai. Tomoya meets with Yori, displaying calm acceptance over Utaha and Ariri's potential departure to the large company, despite an undertone of sadness. Yori discloses his and his sister's past decision to leave the same company to chart their own course and encourages Tomoya not to give up, as crossing paths as rivals would be tough. On the way to their date, Tomoya requests Megumi not to resent Utaha or Ariri, recognizing the value of their opportunity. However, a flashback reveals that Megumi had a heated argument with Ariri when she decided to join Akane's team. Throughout the date, Tomoya presumes Megumi is trying to lift his spirits, unaware that she is compensating for the previously interrupted date with Utaha. They go shopping for clothes, Megumi seeking his assistance in selection, leaving Tomoya mentally drained. As the date progresses, she playfully asks Tomoya to hold her hand like before, only this time without the need to run due to the sparse crowd. Tomoya then leads her to a store to present her with a beanie he had recovered in the first episode, a gift she had given him. Finishing the date on a sentimental note, Megumi takes him to the place where it all began, reigniting his passion for his new game. Overwhelmed with excitement, Tomoya asks Megumi to be his primary love interest again in his new game. The memories bring him to teeters, and despite Megumi's attempts, she fails to console him. On the verge of embarking on their new journey, Utaha and Ariri are startled by Tomoya's sudden appearance but he only wishes them luck. His arrival aids in mending the rift between Ariri and Megumi. As they prepare to say their goodbyes, Ariri gives her glasses to Tomoya and leans in for a kiss, only to be intercepted by a playful slap from Utaha, leading to a tiff as the train departs. Classes resume and Megumi spots Tomoya wearing Ariri's glasses on the way to school, leading to a burst of laughter due to the mismatch. Tomoya teases her about her return to her initial personality, having hoped she would continue her game persona. Meanwhile, the group's younger member reveals she'll be studying at the same school, while Tomoya's cousin appears with a new project proposal. They catch the attention of the onlooking Utaha and Ariri, and their playful banter and ensuing laughter indicate a return to normalcy as the season ends. OVA The movie continues from the events of the second season. It shows that the cousin's group has gained fame and has the support of Izumi, the lowly, and Nayori, who handles the band's publicity. Megumi, however, harbors a strong dislike for Ayori, upset about him joining the group without consulting her. Meanwhile, Ariri and Utaha observe the celebrations from a nearby table, excluded from the group. Megumi approaches them, thanking them for attending the concert. In their conversation, Megumi reveals her animosity towards Ayori. Utaha and Ariri's toxic relationship persists. Megumi asks Tomoya for a private conversation, reassuring him not to be afraid since he was her first time. Uncomfortable with the comment, Tomoya's discomfort is further fueled when Eriri reveals the story of the kiss. Though Megumi doesn't appear upset, she threatens to leave the team. To ease the tension, Tomoya reveals that he is writing the script himself. Izumi accidentally discloses that Tomoya added two more waifus to the game, resembling Utaha and Eriri. Despite this, Izumi remains excited about everything he writes. Akaden joins the celebration but only to discuss work with Utaha and Ariri. Amidst their arguments, they inadvertently reveal important aspects of the game's development to resolve the situation. Akaden offers to pay for all the tables in exchange for their silence. On a normal morning, Megumi enters Tomoya's house and assumes his routine even preparing food. Feeling stuck in the story, our writer asks Megumi for ideas. She advises him to seek help from Utaha, inadvertently expressing her jealousy. Tomoya attempts to find Utaha but is intercepted by Akane, who drives him since Utaha isn't present. Along the way, Tomoya criticizes Akane for taking Utaha and Ariri away, but she reveals that she previously took him to Ariri's house when he asked for help from Ayori. Tomoya lends his script to Akane, who ends up mocking him while reviewing the alternative routes. However, when she reads the main route, she pretends to appreciate it, eventually losing her temper and calling it garbage. Strangely, she can't stop reading due to his passion. Akane suggests that Tomoya continue working as he likes, emphasizing self-satisfaction, alluding to intimate self-pleasure. Back in his room, Tomoya explains everything to Megumi, making references to self-pleasure. As they clarify their ideas disregarding the late hour, he asks her to review the script. Later, during a video call, Megumi becomes upset with the portrayal of the waifus in the game. She becomes angrier when Tomoya refuses to make changes. However, when she reads the main route, 
which is dedicated to her, she approves it with a few alterations as it reflects her feelings for Tomoya. After school, Tomoya gives Megumi the new version of the main story to ask for her opinion, leaving her embarrassed. This pleases him since it would elicit stronger emotions in male players. When Megumi inquires about the continuation of the story, Tomoya mentions that it's time for the protagonist to be with the waifu and invites Megumi to help him. Although she agrees, she clarifies that she's doing it only for the game. They visit a train station together, where Tomoya shows Megumi a new part of the story involving holding hands. He asks for her opinion, and if they can recreate the atmosphere. To make it special, Megumi interlaces her fingers with his, emulating a couple's gesture. However, as they grow sentimental, Megumi reminds him of his special moments with someone else, even mentioning the kiss with Yutaha. During a nighttime video call, Tomoya wants the story to take plot twists leading to the protagonist's relationship with the waifu, ensuring it remains interesting. Megumi explains that reality is different, relationships progress steadily without sudden twists. Tomoya agrees to adapt to Megumi's idea. Before ending the call, Tomoya asks Megumi and me on Saturday to scout a location for the game. However, she reminds him that it's her birthday, making it a special outing. On Megumi's birthday, Tomoya stands her up due to a cane suffering a cerebral infarction. Since Akane had only Tomoya's business card, they called him. Eriri and Yutaha arrive, concerned about Akane's health. Learning that Akane lost mobility in one arm and won't be able to work, they become distressed. Akane's absence greatly affects the game's development as she served as the liaison between the girls and other departments. Although they have merely finished their parts, they lack updates on other areas. Yutaha's editor leaves them under Yori's care, much to Eriri's dismay. Tomoya explains the situation to Megumi and apologizes for not being able to go out with her. The next day, the group holds a small celebration for Megumi's birthday, but there is still tension between Tomoya and Megumi. Additionally, Aori will no longer participate as he helps Akane with her work. Later, Megumi contacts Ariri to inquire about their game since Akane isn't present. Their progress seems satisfactory and Ariri has regained confidence. Megumi reveals that she has admired Ariri for the past 10 years. Tomoya meets with Iori, who informs him that the deadline for the girls' submissions has passed. However, Akane noticed that their art improved with each criticism, pushing them to deliver better products. She negotiated with the company using her arrogance and passion, convincing them the skill of Yori lacks. Consequently, they must adhere to the company's delivery dates. As a result, the girls no longer have to work as they will use what they already have. Yutaha informs Ariri that they won't be asked for further submissions as they will accept what they have and pay accordingly. This frustrates Ariri as she wanted to continue drawing to improve further. Yutaha mentions that someone can advocate for them and plead with the producers to accept more of their work. Tomoya receives a call from the Waifus and decides to go to Osaka. But before that, he talks to Megui, who reminds him to prioritize the game he's making. She also states that she can't be the 2D waifu he desires, leaving him angered. Before negotiating with the company executives, Tomoya receives advice from Yutaha's editor. Using those tips, he enters the waifu's room cheerfully, having secured an additional two weeks for them to make changes. This angers them as they won in a month. Tomoya reviews the game and expresses his admiration, boosting their enthusiasm. He then shows them the changes he negotiated with the company, including an additional scene he worked on with a cane during her recovery process. With Tomoya no longer leading the group, they turn to Megumi for guidance despite her anger. She prefers to suspend all group activities, but they insist on continuing the project. The cousin suggests that Adori helps them. At Yori's house, they showcase their progress and he approves. However, Megumi feels uncomfortable due to her strained relationship with Yori. In the following days, Megumi urges Izumi to focus on her drawings as the presentation day of the game approaches, but Izumi refuses, still upset with Tomoya. While the main waifus continue making modifications, Aruri realizes she has fully regained her ability to draw when close to Tomoya. She promises him that she will be his official illustrator when she starts her own game company. Returning to the group led by Iori, they attempt to put Megumi in a bad mood by discussing Tomoya, hoping to capture her expressions for drawing purposes. This only fuels Megumi's jealousy as the other waifus have some kind of relationship with Tomoya except her. Eriri and Yutaha complete their submissions with Tomoya's help, leaving them exhausted. However, he must focus on finishing his own game, which he had previously abandoned. Eriri suggests that Arataku join her at the company since he is dedicated. Yutaha suggests that Eriri returns to Tomoya's group to help with the game emphasizing the importance of not abandoning their dream. She also mentions that they can help her with her love life as he seems to reciprocate Megumi's feelings. Ariri hadn't considered this possibility, bringing her to tears. Tomoya meets with Megumi, who is still angry with him. He tries to make amends by showing her that he has finished the script and they might still meet the deadline. However, Megumi remains upset as he abandoned his leadership position. Tomoya then confesses his feelings to Megumi, leaving her slightly confused. He clarifies that he fell in love with her because he can be himself when he's with her, and she accepts his confession. She clings to him, making him nervous and positions herself for a kiss. Our guy hesitates at first but surprises her with a sudden kiss, followed by a more proper one. 
Tomoya pays a visit to Akane, who has made progress in her recovery and adapted to her right arm disability by learning to draw with her left. Concerned that she might overwork herself and end up back in the hospital, Tomoya hesitates when Akane suggests they work together. However, he declines the offer, determined to catch up to Ariri and Yutaha on his own. Akane respects his decision but leaves the possibility open for him to showcase his projects and be subjected to her mocking, a prospect that would surely rouse Tomoya's ire. Back with his team, our guy introduces a failed kissing scene into the game, referencing his first kiss with Megumi, much to her annoyance. To everyone's surprise, Yutaha and Ariri step in to offer corrections, seemingly trying to assist with Tomoya's project. This unexpected intervention unsettles the already hardworking group. In a private conversation with Ariri, Tomoya takes the opportunity to apologize for his past selfish behavior, and she reciprocates, acknowledging her own self-centeredness. Ariri then poses a question to him, asking if he had feelings for Megumi when they were children. Tomoya is unable to answer, but it brings Ariri a measure of contentment. Later, when Ariri returns home, she encounters Megumi and proposes that they bathe together in the privacy of the bathroom. Their conversation reveals their complex emotions for the Arataku. Megumi's affection for him goes beyond mere fan service, while Ariri is still grappling with her feelings after being rejected. As the night wears on, the entire team, save for Yutaha and Ariri, dozes off in Tomoya's room. The two remaining members depart, bitter and seeking solace in each other, believing that Tomoya will approach them as either fans or rivals in an attempt to catch up. The team manages to meet the deadline by printing 2,000 copies of their work, which they sell at Comiket. The story then follows their moments together in school, leading up to their graduation, culminating in the waifu and Tomoya returning to the place where their journey began. In a bonus scene, Tomoya and Megumi are depicted as adults. He has forsaken his dream, but Megumi is convinced that he hasn't forgotten his old love. Seeking answers are now old otaku visits Iori, who pursued his dream of creating the ultimate game but fell short. While contemplating outside, he encounters Yutaha, now an adult, and reunites with Ariri, embarking on a new path as game producers to chase their aspirations. It is revealed that everyone has achieved their dreams and formed a team, establishing a game company where they work together as friends in Tomoya's house. What an ending.